So yes, evidently right now is an extremely important time in all of our crypto journeys because as we know, the Bitcoin halving is right around the corner, which means all those huge life-changing gains are as well. But of course, I mean, we're having a bit of a dip right now. Do we buy this dip or is there likely to be a bigger dip before we begin climbing up and up and up? So I want to discuss the possibilities in this very important video with you all today. Mainly candidly, I want to have more of a conversation with you rather than kind of a this is what I think is going to happen because as we all know, no one can foresee the future I want to explain to you my plan and what I've kind of been telling friends and family they can expect around the corner. Sit tight, relax, and enjoy. Now, before I jump into some of these events here that might cause a further dip, and I'm not going to linger too much on them, don't worry. I'm not here to lecture you on macroeconomics or macro global <laughs> events. However, I do want to say, you guys, before I continue, I would really appreciate if right now you drop down there and smash the like button to say thank you for bringing me your insights on today's video. It actually does go a very, very long way, personally speaking. So thank you all for doing that. And hey, maybe you want to subscribe. So of course, you can go ahead and achieve all your crypto goals this coming bull run. So yes, the headline says everything we need to know here. And I'm not going to explain to you what this actually is because we all know of the current situation happening over here in the Middle East. All right. So I'm not going to sit here and lecture you or explain to you anymore. However, I do want to say that it is absolutely important. You do not discredit this as well. I think that a sudden crash in the market is likely going to spawn from this. Now, yes, charts and all these different indicators can definitely mean a lot in terms of what might happen in the market. However, this, I believe, trumps anything that the charts show. The charts could be bullish as hell, but if there is a declaration of war between two countries that impacts the rest of the world and therefore larger countries are forced into it, of course, it will invalidate every single bullish factor in any market, particularly one as volatile as crypto. So I want you to be very well aware. Keep your fingers on this pulse, all right? Now, I did point out, and I want to point out here, what I've highlighted is that the apparently speaking anyway, the response from Israel won't be as severe as anticipated initially, okay? So that might mean no physical um, impact towards Iran, which therefore might have a retaliation and therefore might bring in other countries. It might be a lot less severe. However, how less severe, I'm not entirely sure whether it's physical, whether it's economic, I don't know, okay? But you do want to keep up to speed with this. This source came out about 12 or so hours ago, okay? So please do that for your own sake. If you see anything indicating at, especially the big N word, right? The nuke word, I doubt, I highly doubt it, but you know, just be ready and <laughs> anticipate probably a further drop in the markets because that's at least what I am strongly considering the crash that recently happened main cause. There are other indicators as well, but I don't really want to get into those in terms of charting indicators because I think that was the main cause. But yes, we also do have the Bitcoin halving happening in one day, 20 hours. Yeah, this is a very important day for me personally because this is my birthday. So hopefully this indicates I'm going to have insane 420 gains this cycle. Yes, that is the date of my birthday, <laughs> April 20th. So uh, thank you all for the birthday wishes ahead of time, by the way. But either way, this is a very, very bullish thing because as we know that the, the halving typically indicates a further push in the price of the overall market. Of course, it's an economic event that impacts Bitcoin in a positive way. Therefore, of course, the whole market follows Bitcoin typically. And therefore, of course, people will have that voter confidence. I do want to say, though, ever since this crash recently, there was about half of the uh, total Bitcoin held in the grayscale ETFs diminish, right? It literally halved. So this just goes to show something I've been telling people for a while now is while these ETFs are out and about, the first thing people are going to sell in a time of, again, bad news like what's happening right now, the first thing they'll sell is the most volatile asset or assets, that being, of course, Bitcoin. It does not matter if it's held in an ETF. It doesn't matter where it currently is. If they can get that funds out, they will try to, okay? So while these ETFs are a big positive 
uh, boost for the overall market, they can also, you know, fall uh, along that support level as well, all righty, because people will pull out if they fear the worst. So that is exactly why you need to be aware of these larger events and not so much count on the fact that, you know, Bitcoin ETFs are going to bring the whole market up or bring Bitcoin up entirely. Yes, they are definitely helping this time around, but it is not the be all and end all. So what's to come around the corner? To answer the question, should we buy, should we sell, or should we wait? Well, I'm going to take you through a couple of things momentarily here risk to reward indicators and also kind of a DCA plan that I've been recently doing with my own projects at the current time to remove risk entirely and to boost my rewards and I'll tell you that momentarily here but to I guess answer the question at face value what do I think is going to happen well I actually do anticipate possibly a slight push okay and then a crash that or a slight consolidation period and then a crash I don't think we'll consolidate then move up and stay up I think we'll actually pull, pull down a little bit further from this point in time. There is a lot of support right now, roughly speaking, around this point in time for Bitcoin. However, there are definitely concerns that we do fall lower. Either way, I think the smartest thing for anyone to do in the most non-financial way possible is to dollar cost average. You've heard it a million bloody times. And I know because I've heard it too. And I still sometimes ignore the DCA signal, okay? And it's not really a signal, it's a way of life, all righty? So basically, I've been talking with Mark, right? My 2IC here for quite a bit here. You guys have seen Mark on the channel. He will be coming on here more often. And he follows really, really good DCA plans and structures, right? He doesn't care what's happening as long as the price he DCA is in at is a price he still deems to be able to hit his multiples. And that's what I really want you to take home from here. Once you have your goals set, once that concrete ceiling is placed, basically it doesn't matter as long as you buy at a price that will still be able to hit that goal. And what I'm sort of saying here is if you invest $10,000 today, your goal is 1 million, that's 100X for example. As long as you know you buying into that project at that price will still allow you to achieve 100x, then it makes the most amount of sense to the cost average, okay? And at the current prices, I would assume, depending on what category you're investing in and how many multiples you want, now is a bloody good time to DCA. In saying that, you don't want to DCA too heavy. I catch myself out time and time again wanting to go 100% in, right? Bang, straight away, because I think this is going to be a fantastic time to just get all my entries in. And what typically happens more often than not, okay, sometimes I get lucky and it goes up from there, but more often than not, I get caught out because it goes lower and lower and I wanna invest more capital. So taking this out of Mark's book, he likes to follow a 30, 30, 20, 20 DCA plan or more aggressively, a 40, 40, 20 plan. And what that means is you invest 30%, 30%, 20%, 20%, 20% or 40%, 40%, 20%, 20%. One of those two combinations, you can even go as heavy as 50%, 50% at a given time. But again, non-financially, I think you really shouldn't be going 50-50. Again, non-financially, okay, do whatever you want. But I think to remove risk entirely, again, if you're buying at a level that will still achieve your goals for that coin, your overall targets, well, then I think staggering those dollar cost averages out now is particularly important than anything else. As I said, there could be a sudden change of events here that could allow us to go a lot lower. I mean, again, we're on support in some of these charts, but we're also indicating here that a black swan might, you know, prosper, might come up, all righty? So I think taking all these, you know, macro factors on board, that would be the thing that I would not suggest you do. That's what I'm doing. So you can take that information on board yourself. And it all comes down to risk and reward, all righty? Because this is something that traders always use. This is like the bread and butter, okay, of what a trader needs to know in order to be, I guess, you know, profitable. Because if you take a trade that is always in your favor in terms of risk and reward, you know, you will eventually win, okay? So long as the you know, parameters are correct on the back end of things. But yes, most time, if you, you know, hit a trade that is very favorable to you, you might lose some, but the amount you win should be far greater, all righty? All the upside should be greater in that uh, sense. So we try to use this in investing as well to allow us like in the CCA plan, given these macro events to come out on top, all righty? So you might get in that first 30%, that second 30% that you might allocate to dollar cost averaging into a single project. I'll give you an example here with ICP for me here in a second. And then of course, what can you do, right? If the market goes up, well, okay, at least you're in the project. Maybe if it has a crash sometime in the future, you can begin DCAing. 
that's okay. Worst case, it goes lower and then you bring the average down even more, okay? So it's a win-win in that sense. But here's the interesting thing, right? If you follow this DCA plan, even if the price of your projects go up and up and up and we don't see these levels ever again, one thing you'll notice is that you can invest into these projects risk-free at those higher levels. And I've gone through this in extensive detail in examples like the one you're seeing on your screen here, where I pretty much show you that you can invest into projects and in my case, it was uh, Nia Protocol, where I invested on average about $1, $1.20 into Nia, and I invested a lot of my coins back then. And then when the price was at $4, right, so substantially higher, about 4x higher, I could invest money into my Nia Protocol position because I had such a low um, entry point, okay, weighted average, that even investing on those higher levels barely brought up the average price I invested, which meant... I was buying at market prices, all right, those high market prices, and yet my average price was still very, very low. So again, it was risk-free investing. Possibly a better way I can actually visualize this for you is if you invest down here at $1.50, or let's say $1 way, way down here at Near Protocol, all righty, and you invest $10,000 and you own 10,000 Near Protocol tokens. If you start buying way up here at $5, okay, you're not buying tokens up here at $5 and then some down here. I mean, technically you are, but what you're doing is you're actually on average moving up all of your total portfolio to a level somewhere up here at about $1.20. And then there is a mathematical equation you can work out, which is again, what I explained to you in this video. I might leave the link to this down below. Again, you work at your cost basis and the tokens owned to figure out how much you actually have dollar cost average into, which is why it's important to track your portfolios on places like coin stats. But then of course, again, you're buying up here, but you're only moving that weighted average or your average buy-in up ever so slightly. Okay. So understand that that's how you overcome this. When you dollar cost average in these projects, you can do so staggered and worst case it pumps. You don't get your complete golden entry levels in. However, you can still trickle in that money on the top side without moving that weighted average up too much. For example, I just bought my first lot of ICP tokens. I told you all way back up here when ICP pumped up recently, I said if it falls back down to $11, I'm going to be buying it and entering finally into ICP, which is a project I hold as my top conviction project, right? It's right up there, Hedera HBAR, ICP. I believe in these projects more than anything else for the long term. Full vote of confidence, right? But I hadn't owned any because I look for optimal entry levels. You can buy Solana at 500 bucks. It might be a great project, okay? Hell, you can buy ICP for 200 bucks. But if ICP goes to $201 and then crashes, you bought a great project at a bad time. So it doesn't matter the quality of the project, it also matters on your entry levels. And I think a lot of people I see in the comment section on these videos don't grasp that. They think, hey, you know, you talk about ICP, you didn't own any beforehand. Like, why? Like, are you stupid? But no. All right, it comes down to your entry levels. You have to achieve your goals with these coins. If I bought you know, ICP at 18 bucks, for example, and let's say it never went you know, further down from that point, let's say it kept going up, I'm not going to achieve my multiple, so why would I do that, even if it was somewhat of a local low? All righty. So yes, yeah, so I finally entered ICP, but I'm staggering my entry levels. All right, I bought a bulk amount now, I'll buy a bulk amount later at 40-40, and then I'll buy a smaller amount in that last 20%. And then I'm filled up with ICP because I do think that, again, this is a great time of DCA. However, again, like I've mentioned multiple times, I think that, yes, we definitely could fall a bit lower. There is a strong level of support for ICP around this $10.50 level. So, of course, I don't really see us breaking through this. But if we do, we might really fall down to like $7, something really crazy before moving up again, which is where, of course, I'll throw in my either 40 or 20, depending on where we kind of sit at. All right, I might stagger those buys in quite heavy on the top side, depending on how the market sort of situates if we do have a crash. But again, even if we go up to about $12.50, $13, I'm happy to begin buying up here as well in the worst possible case. So thank you all for watching this far into the video. And I hope at least this is given you a bit, of, a bit of confidence really in your own buys. I understand if right, you're fully in the market, you've got no more cash to invest. First of all, you know that's a bad thing. I've spoken many, many times, you should always have some cash for events like this. But at the end of the day, if you've done your job correctly, if you're buying these old coins, even if you are like 30% down on some of your coins, I am, 
hell, I'm 30, 40% down, 20% down on most of my altcoins on average. But I'm okay with that because the entry points I got in at, I know once the bull run continues, I will have my multiples being made. If you've done that part right, you have nothing to worry about. If you blindly invested and you're panicking right now, you have come to realize a very valuable lesson, which is you always need to make sure when you buy a project, you know from that buy price, you are going to achieve your goal. If you're just buying because of FOMO and that's it, well, you're feeling the, the side effects of FOMO. You're feeling fear, all right? It's a valuable lesson, guys. Don't ever go without not learning something in this market. There's always something for everyone to learn, all righty? Thank you all. Talk to you all soon. Take good care. Bye.